Hello everyone and welcome to JMakes 3B. So today's video is about this 3D printed spring that I've been working on for a little bit. Um, I posted pictures of this over on the JMakes 3D Instagram and I also posted a video of it working which I'll probably include right after the intro. Uh, so yeah. Alright, so let's dive into the design of this. For people who had seen what I've done over on the Instagram page, these are support blocker and support enforcer components. Um, we're going to focus on our main spring component right now. So let's jump back to the beginning. So the first thing that I set up was this big coil. Then I scaled our coil. So what this actually lets you do is the coil only has rectangular cross section, or only has the square cross section. And by scaling it, we're able to get whatever dimensions I want. And then you can have any rectangular cross section. The next thing that we're doing is adding revolves based on the ends of our um, coil. So you can see I've just selected the ends. And that gives me this shape. Then I'm adding a fillet. This fillet isn't amazing. It does break occasionally when you have certain sizes. Um, so it's something that you kind of have to update and be aware of how it's behaving. Then making this natural component, making our support enforcer components. So the reason you want to do this is that if you put support throughout the entire thing, it's really difficult to clean the print. Um, and then a support blocker because you really don't want to be trying to get inside your spring in order to get support material off and you can support it thoroughly from the outside. So what is actually really fancy about this? So it's actually driven by parameters. Um, I have the parameter shortcut set to P, um, but it's down here, change parameters. That brings up this menu um, and you can see there's a bunch of different values that I can play with. So let's say I want to make this a little bit bigger. Let's go up to 16. And it just updates to 16. Um, maybe I want to make it a little bit taller. But look at that. So now we have a section height of 3. Um, what about... I'm going to undo those or redo that. Um, so basically there's a lot of different things that you can play with here. Um, you can have spe section spacing so you can make it stretched out further. And we'll set this back to three. And you can see I've favorited the ones that you're supposed to be able to modify. And I have some other ones, so like coil height, this is what's actually used in our coil primitive. Um, Z scale, this is used in our scale feature and full height, which is used in one of the other features. Those are all kind of hidden, and you can just play with the ones up here. Um, so this is the, the fillet that I mentioned, so I can set this to two and you'll see that it breaks. I can set it to 0.5 and you can see that it's just less of a fillet. Um, so that's one that you have to kind of play around with as you adjust the other, the other values. Um, section number, so this was really cool when I got to work, but let's say I wanna make a longer spring. I can just have more sections to the spring and it just automatically updates so I can do like 10 um, and then maybe I want to make these uniform um, and you'll notice that the spacing and height are used so you can check or I think this one is in here so that you can see how long it's actually going to be um, and you do have to do a little bit of math if you want a certain length um, so section spacing, let me drop this down to two. And some of them you'll see will break certain things. So like in this case, it's the fillet again that broke. So we can drop that down to 0.5 and it comes back in. So you can just play around with all these different values, um, including this. So you'll notice that some of the values are editable, but based on your other things. 
and these two specifically it's designed so one of them is set to a certain expression while the other one is freeform so if I wanted a certain inner diameter and a certain outer diameter then all I'd have to do is make this expression there and make my outer diameter whatever I want it to be um, so I'm gonna control Z again yeah. so that is the cube spring now how do we actually set this up so what we use is the 3d print functionality and then we end up printing each component so we print springs as one component we print all the enforcers as one component so it's a single file and then we also print the blocker as its own component then in Prusa Slicer, which doesn't want to scale nicely, um, we need to set some stuff up. So I'm going to bring in my spring, and then I'm going to go ahead and add a support enforcer load, and we're going to grab the enforcer from here. And you'll see they load in while they're selected, they're green. When you click off of them, they're blue, which is why I made a fusion model match. Um, and then we're going to add a support blocker, load, grab the blocker. And if we slice now, you'll notice we have a problem, no support. If we do for support, enforces only. And we'll update that and slice now. You'll notice we still have a problem. All the support is all up in there and it's difficult to deal with so what I actually did to get them to print nicely is I went to support material and I changed the pattern spacing from 2 to 1 and I think I played around with a bunch of these settings and I found this one gave the result that was closest to what I want so now you can see each support enforcer has its area that it has made support in and there isn't support anywhere else so that's what we want um, and then you can go ahead and print that. What I actually printed and made the demo parts from was this setup where I have a handful of different uh, section widths that I was testing out how they all behave. Um, and all of these springs came out decently. Some of them did break during the process. Um, but yeah, so you can really quickly make a lot of different permutations by using the parameters in Fusion 360. So the a link to the file for this will probably be down in the description. I'll probably upload these set of parts onto um, Prusa printers or somewhere else as uh, both STL and 3MF files. Uh, and if you have any questions, go ahead and let me know in the comments. And obviously, if you want to see more stuff like this, subscribe, like the video. Yeah, have a great day.